This is gonna be a men's pattern, so everything is based on men's measurements. But you know, whatever a guy can wear, usually women can wear too, as tops at least. So it's basically a unisex pattern. It's not a very difficult project. However, as you can imagine, the sensitive part is the color and the button plaquette. I have simplified everything already. Dude, I originally wanted to make a button plaquette like, like this one, where you make a cut in the front in a unified front made of one single piece and then you add your button plaquette in here and it was kind of difficult I made one two three versions just to practice i thought it was not going to be fun for you i solved this by adding this middle block here which allows us to skip this area which is the sensitive one let's talk about the fabric now you want to take ideally some thick t-shirt fabric without stretch you can also take some sweatshirt fabric this is light sweatshirt fabric this is thick sweatshirt fabric, brushed sweatshirt, this is like for winter, this is for spring, and you can also take fleece fabric. I did not find a thick t-shirt fabric without elastane. I don't know, in France it's hard to find somehow. So I fell back on some light sweatshirt fabric with elastane. Uh, the stretch in the fabric made it trickier to sew. You're gonna see how I manage things in the tutorial. It's not a big deal, I'm super happy with the result. I don't, I don't regret picking this fabric at all. You're also gonna need some gabardine fabric for the collar and the button plaquette. It's better to take it without stretch, but if you take it with stretch, it's not a big deal because anyway, we're gonna stick interfacing to these parts so it's gonna cancel out the stretch. Mine was a bit stretchy. And you also want to get ribbing fabric here for the cuffs. You can take it smooth or striped, it's just a matter of taste. Other supplies, you'll need interfacing and three buttons. Mine are nine millimeter wide. You can take whatever size you want. As you can see, they're hidden anyways. Okay, now how to pick your size. So again, this pattern was developed based on male measurements. It's always better to pick your size based on your measurements. And it's gonna be particularly necessary if you're a woman. You're gonna take your measuring tape and you're gonna measure your bust. Mine is 82 centimeters and your waist measurements. The waist measurement isn't that critical here. Then you're gonna open this file called the pattern sheet. It's one of the files that I provide. You're gonna concentrate on the measurement table. I said that I was 82 for the bus. That means I'm an extra small in this pattern. However, I wanted the garment to be a little bit bigger. So I took size S. I want you to notice that this is a slim fit garment. The shoulders are adjusted. We don't have drop shoulders. If you're looking for a more streetwear look, First of all, let's be honest, it might not be the pattern that you're looking for. Or if you want just a little bit more drop shoulders and not really intense like that, then you can take like two sizes above yours. So once you pick your size, you wanna go ahead and print the pattern. You're gonna open the file in Acrobat Reader. This is a very convenient software to print patterns because it's gonna allow us to hide the sizes that we're not interested in. It's a good thing to do because if you print all the sizes together, you're gonna to have lines, all over and it can be very confusing and it can lead you to cut the wrong thing by mistake. When printing, you wanna set your scale on 100%. You want to maybe save ink, so you want to uh, print in draft mode. And lastly, you want to print only the first page. Once it's printed, you check the scale here, you have a, a checkbox here, and you check that it's two inches by two inches or five by five centimeters. If it's the case, then you can go ahead and print the rest of the pattern. After this, it's time to assemble the pattern. As you can notice on each page in the background, like in gray, you have a letter and a number, A1, A2, B1, B2, and so on. Letters are gonna be on the rows, numbers are the columns. So the first row is always gonna be A's, second B's, third C's, and the first columns is always gonna be made of ones, the second of twos, the third of threes, and so on. You cut off the margin, you stick the pages together, the seam allowance is included, it's one centimeter everywhere, except for the hem allowance where we have 2.5 centimeters. That's it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to write them in the comment section and let's sew. Let's have a look at the pattern pieces. Let's start here with the color in gabardine, cut twice. One layer is backed with interfacing. The button plaquette is here, also backed with interfacing. Three buttons. 
now the body parts, upper back and front, the middle block, I missed uh, the back part in white, but it exists, it's somewhere in my room. Then the lower parts of the bodies in the front and the back. Finally, the sleeve parts with at the end the ribbing cut twice. Okay, we start with this part. We have uh, the upper front part and the bottom plaquette. I transferred the notches. I marked uh, the bottom plaquettes on the wrong side of the fabric. For both parts, I traced a line two centimeters from the edge. And on the bigger part, I also traced the buttonholes. It's not necessary, don't do that. You'll have to trace them later on the right side of the fabric. Now, if your fabric is stretchy, you might want to add some interfacing strip right here on the wrong side of the fabric, obviously, because uh, I'm gonna sew in a bit. And in my case, the fabric stretched out. I'm using another machine that I borrowed and it doesn't usually happen with my regular sewing machine so you have to test the waters with yours. Let's keep the parts that are going to be on the right side. I fold against my line. I press down. I place the button placket right side of the fabric visible underneath the blue part while keeping the blue part right side up. So in the end the right side of the gabardine is against the wrong side of the sweatshirt fabric. I sew respecting one centimeter of seam allowance. So here the fabric started to stretch out. I stopped sewing, I ripped the seam and I stuck interfacing. Your interfacing strip must cover the seam line, right? Sticking a lot of pin also prevents the fabric from stretching out. I did it again and this is the result. I fold back and um, we can see the interfacing. It's not great, we don't like that, so I'll tear it away. It's better to take a non-stretchy fabric, it's gonna avoid all this trouble, and also it's better to have a sewing machine that treats stretchy materials better, but yeah, that's what I had, so I worked with it. Press open the seam allowance. Fold and top stitch. left side of the button placket now with my interfacing strip. So one line two centimeters from the edge. And I made dots one centimeter from the opposite edge. I fold and I press down. And I'll fold against my dots here. I transferred the button placement. You trace them according to your button size. Mine was nine millimeters. The blue part is right side up. Place the button placket on top. So. Trim the seam allowance. And let's go back to the notches here. I fold at the notches. I'm gonna wrap the trimmed edge with the seam allowance that we pressed down earlier. Uh, press down again. So here the seam allowance is not gonna be exactly one centimeter and it's totally fine. Another interfacing strip here because this fabric and this machine aren't vibing. I fold and I top stitch. It looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna take the back upper part. I sew the shoulder seams. Now the color. It looks impressive to make, but it's not very difficult, trust me. You'll take the part with interfacing and you trace a line two centimeters from the edge. 
I traced the lines on the part without interfacing. It was a mistake with very little consequence, but you get to make a better version than mine. I press down, lay the two parts right sides together, so, trim, turn inside out, Press down. Then pin to the neck hole right sides together. There were some issues with the fabric puckering. Again, it's because it's jersey. I solved it. And now I encased the seam allowance in the color. I hand stitch. You can use a machine if you want, of course. Now let's top stitch the collar and make our last buttonhole. Close to the edge, close to the edge, close to the edge, close to the edge. And once you get there, you're going to be observing like half a centimeter of seam allowance. I think here there is more. I probably used the width of my presser to it, so it's like seven millimeters. If you do half a centimeter, it's fine. In reality, I did these last steps at the end because I had issues with this sewing machine that I borrowed. So you'll see that the color is um, not top stitched in the next steps, but please don't mind it. Let's add the other parts of the bodies. See here how curved this is. This is again because of the stretchy fabric. I corrected it off camera. I'm adding the other parts for both the front and the back. and I top stitch the seam allowance of the blocks. I'll sew the different parts of the sleeves together, except for the ribbing. I top stitch the seam allowance again. I pin the sleeves to the sleeve openings. Make sure to match the blocks. and I close the sides. I 
I take the ribbing parts, I fold the right sides together and I sew. I try them on. Since it's for men, it was a bit too big, so I narrowed them. I think I removed like three centimeters. When folded, so it's like six total. For the sleeves, I removed four centimeters of length. And of course, try the garment, right? Don't follow me blindly. I fold it to mark the quarters of the fabric. Same thing with the cuffs. I pin uh, matching the quarters. I sew. And I top stitched with my twin needle. I am not sure I like the look, so here's a before and after. So you can decide if you like it or not. I'm going to add my buttons now. Now try the top on to decide which hem allowance you want. I'm going with the one indicated on the pattern, which is 2.5 centimeters. I sew with the twin needle. I correct this by hand, give it a good press, and that's it. I'm really happy with the results. I think it looks really cool. I hope you like it. Uh, take care and see you soon for a new project. Kiss.